It's a real privilege that I get to be the moderator tonight because these three panelists have a wealth of experience, really, really cool stories, and I've had so much fun learning about their stories so far and trying to get a little bit of information out of them. So we're going to start out with Hillary. So you seem to have gone from concept to product in no time at all. Could you walk us through your process and your story and also include a timeline? Um, the idea of Stink Boss really came about uh, back in 2014. Uh, I'm the mother of two stinky teenage boys. I knew because I work in the food industry that uh, ozone kills bacteria. And I knew that bacteria is what causes odor. I thought, why don't I try seeing if ozone will kill the odor? And it did. And, and so that's one of the takeaways that you have to have from this kind of conversation is you really do just get started, right? You don't have to have something fancy. You don't have to have a big laboratory. You can just try um, and, and see what happens. How does this process start? Do you outsource the video? Do you outsource the script, the models? Do you pre-market the video? The, the key is you got to find these uh, uh, Facebook advertising firms that specialize in, in crowdfunding. We just do a whole bunch of <clears throat> ads and put them out there on Facebook and then whatever was converting is where the you know, ad spend would go to and uh, then that would move us up on the Kickstarter page till we were on the very first you know, page when you went there. Yeah, you have to advertise and do the PR. You just can't put something great out there. It's going to die in the vine. We pulled a student from the KU um, videography school or whatever it is. I don't know. Um, a, a friend of my little brother who was actually going to KU at the time. Any creative process is a mixture between a lot of different talents and I've learned more than anything working with groups is more powerful than trying to do everything yourself. We hired a guy, a, a young kid, actually has moved out to LA, kind of an aspiring um, producer director and I said, hey, we got like 200 bucks. Um, we got a great opportunity with this Kickstarter campaign, and um, can you help us kind of get my vision out there? I, I just you know, watched uh, Kickstarter videos, and, and people have been successful on Kickstarter. They're all over YouTube. You don't have to do anything new. You just go out there and, and uh, uh, reverse engineer what's already been done, and then just improve upon it. It's, it's all been done already, a lot of this, and just what you're doing that's special and unique, that's the part you need to build. Don't build all the other stuff that's already been done. I am a, a big proponent of mentoring kids. And so uh, absent the, the funding to be able to do a lot of professional videos, I tapped in really early to this whole mentor concept of, hey, you want to ride the wave a little bit? You want to make some videos? You want to work on packaging? You want to go out and do some market research for us? You want to go out and do some focus groups? Um, and really got some seniors in high school and some college kids involved in that. So it was real work in a real field that they really could grab hold of and grow on. And that's just one avenue that I think so often goes untapped. I think sometimes we think we have to go out and hire these really high dollar agencies for absolutely everything. And, and you don't. Um, there's some really great talent that is looking also for just a foot in the door. And if, and if you can partner with that a bit, then it, it's really, really powerful, I think. Well, what is your advice to someone who thinks they have a tremendous idea, but they know nothing about the process, patent process, forming an entity, making a product, or prototyping? I think the first thing is to get your ideas on the paper very quickly and get a whole bunch of different you know, versions of your idea, then start talking to people and getting some feedback pretty quick before you put a lot of money in it. And then, you know, if that, seed money can get you to the next level, then you can attract, you know, either a company to, you know, if you have something that's proprietary, you can get a you know, trademark on or a, uh, and a brand or a, a, a utility patent. Uh, then you can go around to some companies and say, hey, you know, this is, nobody else has this thing, it's patented, this is really cool. I, I would say patent early, provisional patent quickly, um, before you start talking to a lot of people. Um, I was really fortunate that I knew that because the very first trade show we went to was, um, it actually wasn't a trade show, it was an event, it was a basketball tournament here in town, and I can't tell you how many people came up to me and said, oh, do you, do you have a patent? 
And I thought, oh, thank goodness I do. And then I would find the least expensive ways to prototype that you can. I think today's environment makes it a lot easier than maybe 10 years ago. Um, you can 3D print a lot. Um, you've got maker spaces around where if you don't have tools to kind of tinker with things or whatever, you can go there and it, a nominal fee and you can play with things and make things. We have interest in purchasing our building that we've been in for the last three years and that's really cool, interesting step for me. But I had my banker, accountant, lawyer, and some other smart guy in the room and I let them figure it out. Because um, it's kind of you know, surround yourself around people that are smarter, better than you, and um, if you are trying to figure out how to finance something, talk to somebody who knows more about that than you. Surround yourself with people. Um, the way Chase talked about um, solving company problems, that he didn't know everything himself, but that he just positioned himself around or he positioned other good, smart people around him, like the accountant, the lawyer, the marketing folks, um, because one person, although you may be a great business mind, you don't have an all-encompassing business mind. You still need help. I'm actually a behavioral and neuroscience major. Um, I watched Shark Tank, but that's about as far as my knowledge goes. But because of that, I thought it would be cool to see the panel. I think entrepreneurship is one of those things that connects to every major. Even if you're not wanting to start a business, just the connections in Kansas City and reaching out to other people I think is huge in any major. I think that there are a lot of connections here. I definitely think that maybe in the future I might explore events more t geared towards psychology or my major, but I think that any event that I go to, if I reach out, I'm sure that there's some form of connection that I can find, because um, I think just making connections in Kansas City and at KU in general are very good.